Hi everyone, I'm Chris O'Neill from Sew the Distance. Thank you for joining me. So I'm back with yet another budget-friendly quilt and this is a scrappy quilt. Becca from Sew Becca and Fallon from Sew Be a Quilt and I decided a few months ago that we were gonna create this collab where we were gonna all make a no spend quilt and we were gonna post a tutorial. And by the time you see this video, we have already done a live on this too. So I will link that below. We all are going to be using patterns, either ones that we came up with or free patterns or something from our stash to make this quilt. And it's just, it's a lot of fun. I'm not sure what they are making, but I know what I'm making. And it's this pattern called Chain of Fools. You can find this pattern for free on Moda's website. And that's just a great tip. If you're looking for free patterns, usually all of the big fabric makers have free patterns on their website. They are meant to go with their fabric lines that they have coming out, but you can adjust them or use them with other fabric lines. Now I decided on this pattern because it's extremely scrappy and that's what I want to do. I want to make a very scrappy quilt. And since I already made one using Christmas fabrics where I did a budget friendly quilt last year and another collab with Fallon from So Be It Quilts, you have to check that out too. I decided I was going to do something different and do fall theme. Also, because I wanted this to be really scrappy, I did alter this pattern. Well, let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. Even though I am doing a fall quilt, I made my sample in Christmas fabrics. Don't let that confuse you, okay? All right, so let's take a look. If you've been following me a while, you know that I do not make a quilt without making a test block, and this is no exception. So this particular quilt is made up of two blocks. We have one that you can see right here, and we have one that you can see right here. So there's block A and block B, and let me show you them in real life. Here is the block, and you can see it's made up of many, many squares that we strip, piece, and cut. And then we have the lights in the centers of each side. This looks more complicated than it is. You have to trust me when we start making it, it's much easier than this looks. That's block A. And then this is block B. I'll show you on the pattern where that's at. You can see that right here. The pattern calls for all of the background to be the same. So these little squares to be the same, along with this and these sides. So I can see where they were coming from with making the block like this, but for me, this just didn't do it. So watch what happens when I do something like this. Do you see how that just looks a little bit better? It's a scrappier feel. Even though it's the same tone, it's a light fabric, it gives it a little bit more interest. So when you put it up, I'm gonna turn this one like that just so reds don't go together there, you can see it just adds a little bit of oomph. Whereas if I take this away, it's not as sparkly or something. <laughs> so what I decided to do is that I'm going to, on my pattern, when I make this quilt, I am going to adjust it to make this block for my block B. Now to make our test blocks, the way I did it is I read through all the instructions, scaled it back so I was only making a couple units, so I'm not making an entire quilt to test it out. I'm so glad I did this. I understand this block so much better and I'm ready to get started making a fall themed scrappy quilt using the chain of fool pattern. Because we are using a pattern that is specifically for jelly rolls, we are going to need a little extra fabric because we are using scraps. One of the reasons is because some of our scraps might not be as long as they're requiring them. A jelly roll is two and a half inches by around 42 inches, give or take a few inches, depending on the maker. Also, in the instructions, it tells you to take the jelly roll strip. I have one right here that I actually cut. And it tells you to cut them in half. So this is 42 inches. I'm just gonna cut it in half right here at the fold. So now I have two strips that are each two and a half inches by 21 inches. So the altered fabric requirements are going to include this size, two and a half inches by 21 inches. Again, if you have them shorter strips, that's okay. You just have to have more strips, okay? So here are the materials you'll need for the entire project. You will need a minimum of 79 two and a half inch by 21 inch strips of print fabric. You will also need a minimum of 19 two and a half by 21 inch strips of background fabric. Also from the background fabric, we'll need 24 six and a half inch squares and six, six and a half by 21 inch strips. Again, if you don't have that size strip, you're just going to add more strips, add more fabrics, and it will all be okay because we're going to use up our scraps. 
Now, because this pattern is jelly roll friendly, you need to cut the jelly roll fabric pieces out of my scraps. And this bin here is all of my fall fabric. Most of my fall fabric. It's not all of it, but a lot of my fall fabric. I will also put in this whole mix some greens, yellows, oranges. I want to keep the fabric color value on the darker side just so you can get that full look. I'm also going to cut some beiges and all of that to get all of this fabric ready to go. I'm going to use my AccuQuilt to cut this, but you can use a two and a half inch ruler to cut it or any ruler really, just so you can cut accurate strips that are two and a half inches wide because basically we're making our own jelly roll. I'll meet you back here when I have all of my pieces cut and we'll get to sewing. Okay, so I have all of my pieces cut and ready to go. And I have my beiges and my prints. So we're gonna make block A. Now I'm not gonna use all of these pieces for block A. Some of them will go for block B, so don't panic if you have extras, that's okay. Also, we cut extra, remember? So don't panic if you have some left over. Not a big deal. Also, don't panic if you don't have enough because you can always cut more because we're making a scrap quilt, right? Now that I have all the strips ready to go, it is time to start assembling our blocks. And we're gonna start, like I said, with block A. A, we are gonna make strip sets to make this a block and we need three different strip sets. And I know this sounds confusing, but just bear with me. It'll make sense, it'll make sense, I promise. The first strip set that we are going to make has two print fabrics, then one of your background fabric, and then two print fabrics, making a total of seven strip set units. The next strip set that we are going to make is made up of all of our print fabrics. So we're going to sew five print fabrics together, making a total of seven strip set units. And strip set three, we are going to make four strip sets that have the background fabric, three print fabrics, and one background fabric. I'm going to make all of these and then meet you back here so I can show you our next step with cutting these apart and making our block. Okay, I have all of my strip sets here. They are all completed. So exciting to get to the next step because this is when the fun begins, at least in my opinion. Now, one note about sewing these together. When I did this, I used a scant quarter inch. I know it sounds counterintuitive if we're, you know, uh, seasoned quilters, but it really does make all the difference when you're sewing strip sets together like this. For whatever reason, they just don't come out the way we want them when we use a regular quarter inch. I don't know why. It doesn't make any sense. But I have found that if I use a scant quarter inch, which is a little bit less than a quarter inch, when sewing strip sets together, I get the perfect size. Go figure. I think it has to do with the fold over of the fabric, a little bit of the bulk. And also remember, since we are using scraps and that's usually what I work with, some of them are a little thicker than others and it just makes all the difference. I suggest that you test it out for yourself, maybe on some scraps of your scraps, just to see how your machine works with strip piecing. But as a general rule, I do a scant. Now, if you're curious about the width of these, these need to be width once they're all sewn together, 10 and a half inches. When you're pressing these, make sure you set your seams, meaning press them when they are still folded flat like this and then flip them. And I like to actually finger press them first and then take the iron to them. All of the sets should be pressed in the same direction. We're not opening these seams. Trust me again on that because we are going to nest these when we put it together. It's gonna make it so much easier if everything is just pressed in one direction. So let's get started cutting these apart. To make the units for this block, we're gonna cut the strip sets up into two and a half inch segments. This is strip set one. I have seven of these made. My first step is to clean up one edge. And to do that, I will lay my ruler on here and I'll make sure that these lines are all straight. So my seam lines are straight according to the ruler. Sometimes there's a little bit of a curve. Sometimes you have to tug it a little but straight-ish is always good. And then I'm gonna clean up this edge. Next, I'm gonna turn this around and I'm gonna measure in two and a half inches to cut my strip. And again, I'm going to double check and make sure all of my lines are straight. And then I'm gonna cut. 
For strip set one, I need 50 of these units. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut all of my strip set ones. Okay, so I have 50 of these cut. I cut a few extras so I can have some variety. We're gonna set them aside. And I like to use these trays. So I know that this is set one. Now we are going to do the same to set two. This is the set that has all prints. We're also gonna cut 50 from this. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing. Set three, we are gonna do 25. And the reason for that is because there are two of these in each block. There are two of these in each block, but there are, is only one of these in each block. And we're making 25 blocks. So I'm gonna cut all these and meet you back here. I have these all cut. I am a very visual person, so I like to be very organized with this. I have three trays and I have the set number on the trays. I also have an arrow showing which way they are facing for the pressing, okay? So they're all stacked up nice and we are ready to go. So I have 50 of these, 50 of these, and 25 of these. And here is our block. So you can see it's made up of two strip ones or set one, two of two, and one of three and here's one in real life. And then I made myself this to show how I'm pressing them. So just set up our block and I'm just gonna use this chart. I need two of one here and I'm gonna make sure that the seams are going down. And that's not one, hold on a sec. <laughs> here we go, one. We need two of two and those seams are going up. Move those over a little. And then one of set three, and those seams are going down. And that's our block. Now, usually I am a pinner, so I usually pin these all together. However, I found when I am making this block, I really don't have to they nest so beautifully all the way down and I can just sit at my machine and make blocks. So we just sew these together using a quarter inch seam allowance. Everything should nest. So I'm just gonna take these to the machine and sew them together. The directions say to press them all in one direction. So when I press these all together, just one way, these seams in here. So I'll meet you back here when I have the blocks done. So it's the next day. I have all 25 blocks done, woohoo. I did sew for a few hours on these. These take a little bit of time and I did end up pinning. I found they were getting a little wonky and I wanted to have that extra stability, but you know me, I have to pin. You don't have to if you're not like that, but I just, I had to, I couldn't stand not doing it. I guess force of habit. So I did have three that I am calling rejects that I just wanna to talk to you about. I put a little notes on them so I did not forget. Okay, so this one I just cut down too small when I trimmed it up. This is gonna go into the reject pile. I'm gonna use this for maybe another project, I'm not sure. This one, however, take the pin out of that, I rejected because there's not enough contrast. I'm gonna try, you know what, I'll put up a side by side of this in black and white and in color so you can see. There just were some medium prints that didn't play well with the other side. And I decided that I wasn't gonna use this block. This block is going into the reject pile. And maybe I'll take some strips off or something, figure something out with that. However, this one, even though there's some contrast issues, it's not as bad and I'm leaving this in. It'll add some interest to the quilt. Up next, we're going to make block B and then we'll be able to put this thing together and I can't wait. Let's see how to make that now. To make this block, and we need 24 of these, we are going to need 24 of our centers. And we could do the same thing where we strip piece, but I wanted to use up again some of my smaller scraps, so I chose to do it this way. There are many ways to do this, however. Just so your end looks like this, and it measures 10 and a half by 10 and a half, you're good. You also need your leftover strips of fabric, and you're gonna cut these into 48, six and a half by two and a half inches. And that's going to give you your center unit, which is right here, okay? So I just sewed the six inch by two and a half inch strips to both sides, and I pressed towards the center piece. That will give you this, and you're going to make 
24 of these units. Now the sides I do strip piece because I wasn't as concerned about the variety. I decided to strip piece this part. To do this, you're gonna take your leftover strips of fabric and you're going to sew a strip to the top and a strip to the bottom of all six of these units. You will then get something that looks like this. And you're gonna sub cut this into two and a half inches. Now, one thing I wanna mention, I do not use a scant quarter inch on this. In fact, I don't use a scant quarter inch on any strip set less than three strip sets because I don't need to. But when I get into four or five strips, like the one we used for this project, I absolutely go to a scant because I don't know, it just works out. So now we're gonna cut these just like we did before. Oh, and I did forget to mention, I do press to the dark on these. I am going to clean up one edge, just like before, make sure everything's straight. Turn it around, line that up on my two and a half inch mark, make sure it's nice and straight, and cut. And you're gonna do that to all of these units that you make. So you wanna end up with 48 of these, all mixed up with different fabrics. Once you have them made, you can start assembling this block right here, just like this. You're gonna sew this to this, this to this. Gotta press that better. <laughs> they should nest because of the way we pressed. Put a pin in there and sew them together to get your finished block that looks like this. Again, you're making 24 of these units. Okay, so I have the block B completed. I have them all done, they're here. Here they all are. I don't have a big enough design wall yet. Once I redo the room, I will, hopefully. Then I'll be able to put something this big up there. But this gives you an idea of what this looks like. Isn't it pretty? I love, love, love how it turned out. I love how scrappy it is. And I especially love that everything in this is from my stash and from my scraps. Although I still have quite a few fall scraps in here, it's significantly less, which is great too. Now out of this B block, I did make a few that use some dark prints in the middle. I don't particularly love that, so I'm glad I made extras. Always make extra because you never know, because I don't think I'm gonna use this one in some of the darker ones. However, that said, a variation of this would be to use like a print in the center, and you can see how that would change the look altogether. Let me find another one. So you can get those lines, whoops. You can see how that really also adds some interest if you did that on all of them instead of using a background in the center. That would be so pretty too. To sew this together, I'm gonna do it randomly. I'm just gonna take my two blocks and make my seven rows and there's seven across. It's stress-free and I don't have to worry about laying out rows and worrying about what's next to each other. If your personality though, you need to do that, Go for it, just be yourself with quilting. We all have different ways of doing things. So I'm gonna sew this all together, get it completed so you'll get to see the entire thing. I'll talk to you about what I'm gonna do with it afterward. I'll also show you what I did with the leftover blocks so you can see some ideas if you don't wanna make a full quilt and some things that you could make with those leftover blocks. The quilt top is finished. But before I show it to you, I'm gonna show you two other things that I made. I made two table runners with the leftovers. I did change out the center here and put a print in, but I love it. It was a great way to use up some of those extra blocks that I had. It also gave me a chance to check out some quilting and what I wanna do on the finished product. So this is a great tip too, if you ever need to figure out what you're gonna do, how it's gonna behave, what it's gonna look like, make a little small project like this. Okay. Without further ado, here it is. It's all done, it's so pretty. I love it, I love how it is very random. It turned out, it worked out. So for the backing, I took two pieces of fabric from my stash that I had had forever. Okay, I had this green and I got this on clearance maybe five or six years ago. I bought everything they had, so I had like four yards. And then I had this in my stash that has like little sunflowers on it and I had a ton of yardage of this and I have no idea where I got this, it's I think pretty old. So I just seam these together. When I make my quilt sandwich with my batting, my backing and the top, 
I will make sure that that seam does not go right up the middle because you don't want to be worried about getting it exactly centered. And secondly, you don't want the pull on the exact middle of that quilt. It'll get a lot of wear there and maybe won't hold up as well. So I'm going to sandwich this quilted and meet you back here with a final quilt. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention was the batting. I do have a lot of batting on hand, so I'm going to use that, but you can piece batting together too, and there's tons of tutorials. I have one quick short on it. I'll put a link to that below too. Okay, it's finished. It's right here. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty and heavy and snuggly, surprisingly snuggly. I just did a crosshatch quilting design in it. I did use a different thread and I don't know that I would use it again, at least not on this project or a project like it. I used Glide. It really stood out and I think I wanted something a little more subtle, but this is the way it is. It's done. No spend, just stuff out of my own stash and believe me, I have a ton more stash to work with. There. <laughs> so give this pattern a try. In the description below, I will put the measurements for that B block, the things that I changed. Overall, even if you didn't change it, this is just a really great pattern and a lot of fun. Great way to use either jelly rolls or your own stash like I did. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you take some time to sew and I'll see you real soon. Bye.